Okay, so we're going to start off with three topics we want to deal with here. We're going to talk about normal force, which will include situations where we talk about apparent weight. Uh, I want to yeah, spelling me, don't necessarily get along, but we'll go with that. Apparent weight. Um, then we're going to jump to tension and the force produced by a spring. It was actually in chapter 10 in our textbook, but um, I determined this year I want to introduce springs as early as I can, and it's not all that complicated. We've even mentioned it in class a couple times. So normal force. Force by any surface. That could be two Fs in surface. Uh, we'll just go with it. I think there is, but that doesn't matter. All right. No, maybe not. That could be the most typical case, which is like a floor supporting you. But it could also be um, when you run into a wall. When you run headlong into a wall, the force that hits your face is a normal force because it's by a surface. It's not by a rope. It's not by a spring. It's not by the jaws of some rabid dog. It is by a surface. So, key here is the word normal. The word normal means that that force must always be perpendicular to the surface. So, where we get in trouble with normal force is it is so often involved in supporting us when we're standing on a horizontal surface, floor, if I stand on a desk or something. And we're so often in our lives in equilibrium, in other words, either moving at constant velocity or stationary, that the normal force is oftentimes closely associated with your weight. But the truth is, is it doesn't have to be equal to your weight. So the simplest case would be floor wellborn on a block. And in this case, and my net force is zero, or my acceleration is zero, or I'm at constant velocity, all of which would mean I'm in equilibrium, if you recall from class the other day. My weight would push down on the floor. Newton's third law says the floor, uh, maybe, maybe phrase that, or let me draw that. So we're going to say my weight doesn't act, my, the weight, gravity pulls on me. And in turn, I push on the floor. So the floor feels a force equal to my weight against it. It pushes back on me with a normal force. And if I'm in equilibrium, the normal force and my weight turn out to be the same. And that is often the case. But it doesn't have to be the case, which is where this apparent weight stuff comes in. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So this is, once again, I can't stress it enough. While this is often the case, it is not always the case. For example, what if the surface was like this? What if I was standing on what we call an inclined plane? Here, my push on the surface would be, my weight would be straight down. But which way would the surface push on me? The key is normal, remember, means perpendicular to. That means the floor has to push perpendicular to its surface, like that. And so the normal force here would actually have to be larger than my weight. And we'll look at that more when we look at inclined planes, but there, it's, it, this and this would not necessarily be equal. I'm just making sure I get that right. More or less, he says. Less. I lied, it would be less, I believe. Normal force. Yes, we would call it, it would have to be less than my weight. Okay, so moving along a little bit to a, a little more on apparent weight. Let me find my addition here. Here we go. Of course, if you have a wall, and you're holding a book or something against the wall by pushing on it with a force. I usually you don't draw a diagram like this, but let's say you push against the wall, the book like this. So in this case, you 
the wall would feel your push. And it would push back on the book with a force that is equal and opposite. This is the normal force. Notice it's perpendicular to the wall. And by the way, the other forces on this would be, well, the weight of the book would be this way, not related to the normal at all, and would actually be canceled out by the force of friction. That's all on the side for now until we get to friction. But situations where normal force does not necessarily have to be equal to weight. So, your bathroom scale is set up to just assume, because it's a stupid machine, it can only assume that you are standing either at constant velocity, so you're using it in your family's RV as you drive down the road at constant velocity, or stationary, but in either case you're right, standing in your bathroom at home, which by the way, you're not really stationary because you're on the earth and it's flying through the universe, but you get the idea. We are in what's known as an inertial reference frame. We are moving with a constant velocity or that velocity could be stationary. But either way, we are in equilibrium. And your scale assumes that. And under those conditions, and, under the, and assuming that your floor is horizontal and you're not, you know, standing you're not in West Virginia hillbilly and you got your, right, and you got your scale on the side of a mountain, it is assuming that your floor is horizontal and all that. So your scale does not actually read your weight. It reads the normal force. It reads how hard it is pushing up to support you. So in the case that we talked about in the previous slide, well, that would, of course, be your weight. But this is what your scale tells you right here. And under these circumstances, that is your weight. But we can start screwing around with things like this because we're in physics now. And so now we're going to go to the elevator, the elevator of apparent weight. So in other words, we'll create this elevator. Um, let's do this. We'll get rid of this. And we'll make ourselves an elevator that we can reproduce. Boom. So here's an elevator. Elevator can move up or down, of course. And in the elevator is a scale. And the scale just represents, once again, how hard the floor of the elevator is pushing on you. It does not magically know how much you weigh. It can only tell you how hard it has to push to keep you from going through the floor. Now we're going to put you in here. I make myself or me or somebody, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's make uh, this shape looks interesting. All right, this is going to be you. So let's say that we know that normally your weight is 300 newtons. If the elevator is in any state of equilibrium, right now I want you to pause to yourself and describe to me, for a typical elevator, the three circumstances you can think of where your elevator would be in a state of equilibrium. I will pause. Mm -hmm. Option one, it's just sitting there, stationary, right? You have a constant velocity, and that velocity is the boring case of zero. You could be moving up with constant velocity. That period of time in the elevator while it is moving upward with constant velocity, not when it's getting started, not when it's slowing down, but while it's just between floors and nobody's pushing the buttons. And of course, the other case is down at constant velocity. But really, the direction doesn't even matter. If this was some funky elevator that was able to move diagonally, as long as you had a constant velocity, it wouldn't make a difference. You're in equilibrium. You would 
technically, without the sounds and the vibrations and everything else, you would have no way of knowing that you were moving. If, you, there was, if it was a closed-in elevator, you couldn't see the world around you, you would have no way of knowing. Okay. If any of those situations that I'm about to erase were true, then the scale reading, the normal force, in other words, by the scale, right, so let's see, let's put it this way. If... You're in any state of equilibrium, constant velocity, comma. Then your scale would read, the normal force read by the scale would be the same as your weight. It would be your actual weight. Okay, so let's take the case, you get on the elevator at the bottom floor, and let's take the case when the elevator is accelerating upwards. I cannot stress enough to you that accelerating upwards is different than moving upwards. In fact, you don't even have to be moving up to accelerate up. You could be moving down and have an upward appointed acceleration. You should probably ponder that for a second. I mean, you have to think of what the heck, how could I have an upward acceleration but a downward velocity? We've talked about this relationship between acceleration and velocity. Acceleration does not have to be the way you're moving. It is the direction in which your velocity is changing. Now, we'll get to that case later on, but think of how that might be possible. Right now, we're going to take the simplest case. We're going to take the case where you start at rest, you get on the elevator, the door shuts, and that time when the acceleration is directed upward and you begin moving upward, and remember when they're pointed together, you are speeding up. Regardless of the direction, you are, your speed is getting faster. But what I'm most interested in here is it doesn't really matter which way I'm moving. I'm experiencing an upward acceleration. Okay, so we're going to look at this thing called a free body diagram for this situation. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to duplicate this page. Boom, boom, clone page. There we go. And we're going to get rid of the writing, most of the writing. So we're not in a state of equilibrium. We are going to be in a state of upward acceleration. In this case, speeding up, although it really doesn't matter. Remember, this over here just represents what your actual weight is, not what your scale is reading. Pull this over here, and this over here, and this over here. Now, we're going to consider the situation when the elevator is accelerating upward. That means the net force on you, or about you, is not zero. It's your mass different than your weight. In fact, if we assume that G is approximately 10, right, 9.8, then we're going to say that your mass, of course, would be, I'll actually give you, you should pause the video right now and you should see if you can find your mass, all right, your pretending mass, which, by the way, is going to turn out to be like you're a baby, I think. Yeah, like you're 30 kilograms. That's like 60 pounds, so you're like a kid. But, okay, just deal with it. Eh, 60 pounds, that actually might work come to think of it. So let's, well, let's, let's be realistic. So if I divide by 10, because weight is equal to mg, and if I divide, and my weight is 300, and my mass I don't know, but g is what we're going to say is approximately 10, that gives me a mass of 30 kilograms. Which, by the way, yeah, it's like 60-something pounds. So you're like a little kid, but that's right. It doesn't matter. Small child in an elevator. Um, if you don't like this example, go grab yourself a small child, stuff him in an elevator, and see what happens. Um, so your mass is about 30 kilograms. So your mass times your acceleration, that means if your acceleration, like we've said, is directed upward in this situation, your net force is directed upward. That means when you take into account all of the forces on you, there are going to be, there's going to be a net force up. I don't even know what it is, doesn't matter what it is, because I don't know what the acceleration is right now. But 
There are how many forces on you right now, do you think? Well, pretty straightforward. That's why elevators are simple. There's only two. You have your weight, mg, acting on you. Put a dot here, it represents your belly button. Boom, you got mg. Now, I'm about to draw an arrow upward. I'm not going to draw it yet. I'm going to draw an arrow along this line somewhere. How big of an arrow do you think I should draw? Do I draw it less than my weight? And what would that mean if I did? Do I draw it equal to my weight? What would that mean if I did? Or do I draw it larger than my weight? Which of those three would produce this? Or, if you like, if acceleration's up, net force has to be up. Which of those would produce an upward acceleration, an upward net force? And I think you would agree with me that the correct answer, if you're going to accelerate upward or have a net force that's upward, you need an arrow that is longer than this one. Because when it's all said and done, you need some net force upward. Now, what is this force that I just drawn? What is this magical force upward? That's your normal force. So to have a net force upward, your normal force would be greater than your weight. Otherwise, how is it going to accelerate you upward? The floor is the only thing pushing on you. It could accelerate you upward. So in this case, your acceleration is upward. Remember, I don't care about velocity. I don't care really how, which direction we're moving. I'm just really talking about our acceleration and our net force. So what is your scale going to read? Is it going to read your weight? Remember, scale, the scale is normal force. It does not actually read your weight. It just tells you how hard it has to push. Well, the scale is now in charge of not only keeping you from going to the floor, but also accelerating you upward. So it has to push even harder. So it's going to read something, all right? The scale's reading is going to be greater than the 300 newtons, which is your weight. It's going to be greater than your weight. Now let's go back for a second. There's two situations I can think of where my acceleration could be upward. It could be, situation one is the one we've kind of discussed here, and that is I am either at rest or, and my velocity, we're going upward, my velocity is up and my acceleration is up. When that happens, that's the situation where you get on and you start moving upward, and you're moving upward and you're speeding up. But Elevators slow down, too, don't they? And more importantly, I want you to think of the situation when you're in the elevator and you're, you're going down to the lobby. As you're, getting, as you're approaching that stop at the lobby, which way are you moving? You're moving down, right? But you need to slow down in order to get off the elevator. So which way does your acceleration need to be to, to counteract this velocity, to slow you down, not speed you up? Holy mackerel, there's another case where we can have an upward acceleration, where you're actually not even moving upward, you're moving downward. It's the case where you're slowing down. But in either case, this would be identical, assuming your acceleration was the same. Assuming that it slowed you down at two meters per second, just the same way it sped you up at two meters per second, per second, I should say. This situation, speeding up, and this one slowing down, both have the same acceleration upward, both would have the identical free body diagram, where normal force would be larger than your weight. Okay, so now let's go on to a situation where we have, where your scale might read less than your actual weight. Okay. So what direction does an acceleration need to be, or a net force, either one, what direction would they have to be to produce a situation where the scale would read less than your weight? Well, if you, a moment ago, if you recall, we said acceleration, an upwards-appointed acceleration would produce more than our weight, 
So I'm thinking that if I had a downward pointed acceleration, therefore a downward pointed net force, sum of all the forces, then I'm, that would be a situation when the scale would read less than my weight. Let's see how that would work. I don't actually change my weight. That is the same as it was before, mg 300 newtons. But now, I need a net force that's downward. So, same question I posed before, I gotta adjust, normal's the only one that can adjust. Is the normal force gonna be bigger than the downward error of my weight? Equal to it or less than? And if I need a downward net force, hopefully you're in agreement here, this force is gonna be smaller. Still gonna be upward, because my feet are pushing on, it's pushing back and all that, but it's gonna be smaller. And when I combine these two, my net force, the end result, weight would be a little bigger than normal force in terms of its magnitude. The net force would be, there'd be something left over and it would be downward. So if there is a downward net force, I will accelerate downward. Does that mean I'm moving downward? Does it? Think, think. Does it move a half? Yeah, I think it'll last example, right? So, this could be the case, and by the way, this is what my scale would read then, something less than my weight, because my scale can only tell me normal force. So the scale in this case is going to read less than my weight. It's going to read a reading less than 300 newtons. And by the way, newtons, pounds, you know, pounds are also force, so it's not a big deal. It should be less than, if your normal weight is, in my case, about 160, it would read less than 160 pounds. Now think of the two cases we could have a downward pointed acceleration. One is, okay, you get in the elevator and it starts moving downward, so the, and you're speeding up as you go down, so velocity is down, acceleration's down, you're speeding up. So that's like you get on the top floor and you start going downward. What if you're headed to your room, or you're in a hotel or something, and you're going up on the elevator, so you're moving upward, but just before you get to your floor, you gotta slow down, right? So in order to do that, the acceleration has to be pointed downward. Both cases, this would be true. Okay, so apparent weight has to do with the scale will tell you. And you already know this, because if you've ever gotten on your bathroom scale and put your hand, so this is you, right? And you're standing on your scale. And normally it's weight, but if you then reach out to the counter, and you push this way on the counter, up on the counter. Well, the counter will push down on you, won't it? That's an extra downward force, in, in including your weight. So your scale has to go read larger, because it has to counteract your weight, and this extra force is pushing down on so you. So you can make your, right, you've messed around with your weight on the bathroom scale, and if you push this way on the counter, it will push up on you, supporting some of your weight. Think of an extreme. Think like you're, 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 le you're at the scale close to the counter, and, but you pretty much almost stand on your hands. So just your toes are barely touching the, the scale. The scale will tell you you weigh two pounds. Do you really weigh two pounds? No. That's just how hard it has to push. Most of the lifting force is being, which support force is by your hands on the counter. So apparent weight comes from the fact that a scale reads normal force.